I was wondering if you could help. My sister has lung cancer and what she can do and how much it costs to have a consultation with you. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot people can do when they have diseases of all forms. The first thing I think to do is to work to reframe the concept of a disease to an opportunity. To, to start with curiosity, to say, well, what, what benefit could I derive from this condition? Even though it's scary, even though the potential loss of life or the shortening of life or the pain associated with disease is troubling, um, and there's a certain amount of suffering associated with even anticipating it, let alone having it, there is uh, an opportunity that most people have to reprioritize their lives, to focus on the things that truly matter, that allow them to then exercise their true being, their, their calling, their mission in life as a, as a person who was born. Um, and even, and I think that that's very important because when we think about healing on the physical plane, and this has a lot to do with my philosophy of slow medicine that I shared, um, when we're inflamed, when we're aggravated, you know, and the word aggravation uh, and inflammation come from that same energy system of anger and, and frustration. Um, it's inflammatory. The cells of our body do not like inflammatory environments. And so if, if we don't check that uh, or don't have a, an effective way of dealing with it, we wind up being more physically sick than we may need to be. Um, it's a challenge. I, I understand that. And nobody really brings this on themselves, quite frankly. This is the condition of a human being, is to be born, live, get old and die, or get sick and die. It's, there's no alternative. So we're all going to be facing that path. The question is, what can we do with what we have? And can we elevate ourselves outside of the physical construct into the consciousness? And this is, when you do that, not only does it help you grow spiritually, but it actually helps your body because your body doesn't like the opposite, which is to stay inflamed, to stay aggravated, to stay grounded in the turmoil of the physical plane, the earth, which is always in a state to some extent of a form of deterioration. And so the first thing is to reframe, is to, or to at least get curious. Is there something in this that I could learn that would really be a blessing? Ask that question. That's very important. I think that's a big, big deal. Mm -hmm. Secondly, um, when it comes to practices, you know, what I learned in other systems of medicine, our body is, is interesting. Our body is like the dashboard on our cars. There are different lights that go on depending on what's going on underneath the hood. Um, and when the light goes on in a dashboard in our car, by the way, it doesn't say change the bulb. It says go in the hood, open it up, and look and see which part it is that you know, it's, you're being asked to address. Our body has these different organs, and the different organs are related to different energy fields. Other systems of medicine, like Chinese medicine and Ayurveda, know this. They understand this. This is the fabric, the basis of their understanding. The lung, as an example, in Chinese medicine, is associated with the energy of grief, of loss. Um, and when somebody has a disease, then, you know, in a Western context, I often will say, let's look at it from that lens point of view. It's not that the only way to look at it, because you still want to deal with the lung tissue itself, and there's, you know, something maybe that can be done that way. But there's an energy field associated with it that could be explored that may make a difference for that person. So when somebody has a lung condition, I usually say, what are you grieving? I ask that question. And often that leads to an exploration for that individual of something quite meaningful. Mm -hmm. That too is healing. That too is very healing. Mm -hmm. um, I can you know, share, but we don't have the time, many stories of how that has helped people. It, it's the tip of an iceberg for them. Now we all grieve, we all have anger, we all have frustration. So it's not like there's something specifically wrong with that person. It's just that when you go into that area, when that's the physical condition, when that's the light on the dashboard, then that seems to have a particular value for that person. Yeah. As far as seeing me is concerned, you know, my work is, is set up in such a way that I turn nobody away. Uh, that's just my philosophy. I, 
yes, I have fees um, because I also am feeding my family and living in this world. One day I would love to not. I actually, when I first went into medicine, I sort of wanted to be in a barter system for my care. I did not really want to charge people money, but that's the currency. Um, and I do need money in my life, as we all do, to you know, take care of some basic things. I have five children. Uh, they need help. Um, you know, I have animals. Uh, they need to be, you know, to eat. Um, I have an environment I still consider, you know, want to learn. But I don't want to overcharge people, and I don't want to get, you know, caught up in that. So basically, if people contact me, I'll figure out something that will make them feel good. In general, I don't think free is a good idea, just because I think people need to invest in themselves. But the amount of investment to actually get the results that they want to achieve. Um, but the amount of investment varies depending on where somebody comes from and what, they, what means they have. And perhaps somebody's investment to me is to write me a, a beautiful letter. I'm okay with that um, if it's heartfelt because mm -hmm. that to me is the exchange. That's what one day I hope we achieve on this planet, which is the way we serve each other and support each other as the currency. Absolutely, I feel exactly the same with the mantras. You know, it's like how can how can you put a monetary value on chanting and singing? You know, it's uh, it's so difficult to live in the world and be part of, of right. all that with something so deep and uh, absolutely not uh, non entertaining. It's not at all an entertainment. You know, it's some. It's more of a it's more of a temple vibe of coming together. Uh, almost as if we complete the circle of musicians when we come on the stage, but it's just a circle. And, uh, yes. You know, everybody participates, everybody contributes mm. in their own way. And that creates the, the energy field, you know. I like that Chinese. Yeah. Uh, Osho talks about it. I wonder if it's true when he said in ancient China, the doctor would be paid as long as the patient yes. would be healthy. And uh, yeah. that's quite great. It's really in our lives, you know, this is often said, we take nothing with us when we leave, nothing physical. And so why would we need any physical, anything physical while we're here either? I mean, if, if somebody supported me by uh, taking care of my chickens um, and, you know, working on my farm and, uh, you know, patching up my roof, uh, that's what I need. I don't really need, you know, some sort of, you know, sort of green paper uh, in a drawer somewhere. Um, and so we've lost our way a little bit uh, when that's become the dominant currency. And um, every opportunity I get, I look to see if there's an alternative to the currency. Um, much of what I do then is, is events where I speak and I just share a perspective. I do believe when people hear something like this very often, they can figure out the rest for themselves. They don't need me forever. They need enough faith uh, in their own capacities to figure it out because it's their lives. It's their meaning. The question I ask for people is not what is health, but why do you want to be healthy? What are you doing with your health when you have it? Mm -hmm. um, that's the important question. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Michael.